another interesting question came up during our discussion as we started uh, the book of Ephesians uh, for this summer. Um, we discovered that God's love is unconditional, uh, that when he saves people, his, his salvation is unconditional. He doesn't place any conditions upon us by which we must earn salvation. And so one of our students, uh, she, she raised her hand and she asked, uh, what, about, what about people uh, who are transgender? Uh, what if they have a different gender identity than that which God created for us? And what if people have a different sexual orientation than that which God gave people naturally uh, according to his uh, creative design, according to his own will? I think this is a great question as well. Uh, if salvation is truly by grace alone, through faith alone, God doesn't place any conditions upon anyone for salvation, period. Um, we all every single person, we all identify ourselves in some way as we grow up. We all orient ourselves in some way as we grow up. Uh, we all have lusts that are ungodly. Every single person, whether those lusts are sexual or not, whether, whether those lusts are heterosexual or homosexual or not, we all have lusts that do not honor God, that do not glorify God, that are sin if we act on them, right? Um, I am personally very glad that God doesn't place any conditions upon me for salvation, right? But when we follow Christ, when we become disciples of Christ, uh, he, he calls us to then follow Christ. You can't follow Christ without following Christ. That makes sense, right? Uh, without honoring his teaching, uh, without uh, denying uh, self, taking up our crosses and following after him in the way that he lived on the earth, which is which was a way of self-sacrifice. Um, when we become Christians, when we have Christ, begins transforming our hearts and our minds. That doesn't mean all of our lusts are removed immediately. Um, it does mean uh, that even the transgender, uh, even even the, even the homosexual, um, that they can have a place with God in heaven, uh, just like the man who lusts after women before he comes to Christ can have a place with God in heaven, uh, just like the man who looks at a woman and desires her or who hates his brother can have a place in heaven with, with Christ, right? Uh, but when we come to Christ, our hearts begin to be transformed. We receive the Holy Spirit, um, and we begin to desire to please Christ, which means denying our own lust, denying our own selfish desires, uh, denying our own uh, entitlement, um, no longer living life uh, with the motivation of pleasing myself or having my preferences met, but instead living life with the motivation of bringing glory to God and being um, the image of God on earth, which which in some way uh, means submitting to his uh, creative design, his created, his created order, um, because in his created order, he painted a picture of himself as he put his signature up on the earth, creating man and woman in his image. Uh, and then we also receive this good news, like in Christ, uh, we can be exactly who we were born to be, who we were designed to be, while society and while culture around us tells us we have to change in order to fit a certain paradigm or in order to fit into a certain category, uh, which is uh, now now the category is fluidity. Like, unless you are fluid, uh, you, you don't really fit into society. You don't really fit into culture. Uh, you are uh, to be shamed and you are to be mocked because you're not with the program. Like this is society's message, but in Christ we receive quite a different message. Come as you are, even with all of your sin, come as you are, have a relationship with Jesus, come and see that the Lord is good. And as you have this relationship with Jesus and he transforms you, you don't actually have to actively change to fit into any categories because we are all given the same command. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow after Jesus. Uh, so we don't, 
we don't have to take on this burden of change. God understands we have certain desires, we have certain preferences, we have certain lusts. God understands that. It does not take him by surprise, okay? He has all knowledge. And all people, whether or not you're transgender, whether or not you're homosexual, are told, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow Jesus, which means the Christian, even in marriage relationship, even a heterosexual marriage relationship, is going to look way different from a worldly conservative marriage, even because it's going to be a godly marriage uh, where partners are interested in self-sacrifice and they are interested in representing who God is, the man representing who God is in relation to his creation and the woman representing who creation is and who humanity is in relationship to God, um, moving into God's paradigm, God's model, and people are going to be more interested in uh, being the image of God rather than fulfilling their own lusts and their own preferences. Why? Because we love God, and He is our Father, and we wish to honor Him, and we love Him more than we love ourselves. So yes, there is hope for those who have a sexual orientation according to their own desires that does not agree with God's created order. There is hope for those who have a gender identity that differs from God's created order. There is hope for heterosexuals who lust after women. There is hope for people who have a tendency to steal and cuss and drink and get tattoos. Okay, there is there is hope. And this is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You no longer have to burden yourselves trying to get everything you want. I don't have to burden myself trying to get everything I want, uh, which in the flesh is uh, a following in the flesh. Uh, what I want is to have uh, a lot of influence in the flesh. Uh, what I want doesn't honor God because he is the only one who is worthy to be called Father and teacher. He is the only one who is God. I am not, and I love him more than I love my own desires. This is what it means to be a Christian, despite gender identity, despite sexual orientation. And this makes the Christian life a lot simpler than many people try to make it. So I mean, that was just a great question asked by one of our students, yes, there is hope, but we are all challenged to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow Jesus, live a simpler life. Uh, so there you go.